The Future Ahead by Wardang Luth A Brief Introduction to Chapter 9 How Far I Have Come Up to this point in my life's journey Up to this point, my life is a sum of all the better and worse experiences. It has been up and down, like the season cycle, where a season begins and ends before another season starts. It has been an uneasy journey up until this moment. My parents gave me life so I could have a future, which I'm grateful for. Leaving my parents at the beginning of 1985 was also the end of our togetherness. I gained life, and they gained death forever, we will never meet again. I lived as an orphan all the time that I spent in North Sudan, but was unaware of my orphan status. I left my hometown when I was between the ages of 13 and 16. My parents died when I was away, I didn't know when my mother passed away and if I would be considered an orphan at that age. I was busy becoming someone and hoping that the war would end one day, so I could go back to my family, but that did not happen. Recently, I realized that I was living in the orphan category even though it was not spelled out. I lived every day, asking myself why they were killing us, but finding the correct answers was impossible. My life was a journey without a map. It was a journey of fear of death, not knowing that death is gravity that you cannot escape from it. I never understood why, and God knows, and I will not bother myself, because life is a stupid journey. Whoever created life or invented it fell short of showing its intentions. As long I cannot change the death outcome, it is unworthy to pursue the reason behind existing of life. My job is to seek what I will change or improve and benefit from it. Interestingly, all of us, rich, poor, weak, and robust, wait for our death or move into an unaware stage of life. My job on earth is to live purposely, to my ability, before the end of my soul parts, from the physical body. Interestingly, we are uncertain when and where the soul will depart the physical body and end up creating fear and confusion within our world. For this reason, if there is a God, his intentions might be different from our perceptions and understanding. My expectations of life are remarkable, but the reality of our world does not move in the same direction as mine. In my experience, each person lives according to his aims or goals. Because each of us uniquely creates our goals with needs and values, the difference is birth conflicts. We see life from a different angle in how we relate to one another. Therefore, the energy responds according to the dependences on the individual's desire. Fear death and know what to expect if you are not fully living life right now. The result could be associated with uncertainty in future life. Humans are facing challenges and conflicts everywhere in the world. Even I left as if the Creator gives everyone everything to live comfortably, but we mismanage these gifts. The feeling of freedom is good. Your thought choices matter. When you are not free, you are already dead. I cannot say enough about the importance of freedom to think and choose what you want to be. Your choice makes you a unique individual and allows you to shape your life from your thought production. Living in the North was death itself. The country does not care about its citizens as long as they do not believe in God, and the crimes were committed in broad daylight. The mistakes of the 21st century, mistakes are mistakes, whether against individuals or groups. Have you ever wondered if it is an excellent time to be born now, before, or later in the future? What reasons are your answers based on? Life and happiness are not standalone features. The life and happiness of an individual are not standalone features, instead, they are rooted in many elements, from the relationship to career, to their field of study. These elements build personality and lifestyle and relate to others, relatives, and close friends. Therefore, we need supportive aspects in our life. My first experience was in 1991 when I was in middle school second year, and I was ahead of A, B, and C classes for final year results. My school was one of the three middle schools for the Southerners or displaced people from the South. I was studying hard, hoping that the war would end soon, so I could go back to my parents and show them what I have done for myself. One evening, 
when we were leaving the school, my teacher called me into her office and asked me to dress up well the next day because the results would be announced tomorrow, and I was ahead of the second-year classes. It was a sad day in my life. As I was preparing that night for the next day, I remembered that my parents would not be there with me. None of them will see my result, except my mates from school. My teacher introduced me to the school that evening as a quiet, intelligent, and respectful student, but these words sent a wrong signal to my mind. I received the result and could not stop crying, and nobody knew why, some were asking if I was crying because I didn't expect to be first in class. They were wrong. I wanted to be first, and it was my mission, but I was burning inside because I was missing supportive elements in my life. What was missing was showing my results at home, this was what I went through all my entire educational journey. No one will see my school reports till I leave this life, none of my parents will know about my educational journey. The book is now available online as ebook, paperback, and hardcover on Amazon. Googlebooks.com, Barnes and Noble.com. Get your copy today. For more information, visit us at www.onutime.com. Also, on my YouTube channel, Making Learning Accessible. Thank you. We're dang.